Hello again YouTube fans. Here I am with my HHO dry cell generator. Getting ready to tear it down and put it in the truck. First I wanted to show you some of the components. Um, I've touched on a lot of this stuff before. I've got a black box from Radio Shack with four 30 amp relays, one for each hot plate. Uh, at the bottom you see four circuit breakers. They're 20 amp circuit breakers, 30 amp relays. Each cell is only drawn 10, 11 amps. Uh, the double cells are drawn 24 amps maybe, so, but it, it hasn't tripped the circuit breakers. <clears throat> got a positive bus bar, negative bus bar, six gauge wire, finely stranded 12 gauge wire for the each individual cell. There is a little bit of warmth in here right now. Uh, we've got a fancier set of switches waiting to be put in the truck. This is just to control each set of each hot plate. One cell, two cells, two cells, one cell. Okay, and the bubbler. Now this isn't the bubbler. This is the reservoir. Reservoir. The whole thing holds about three quarts, including the generator. Um, we have a blow-off cap. Uh, it's a, a test plumber's test cap. This is where the HHO comes out. Got a check valve. Got that on eBay. Doesn't work all that well. Um, here's the, the sight glass. Got a bubble in it right now. But I put that zip tie on there to mark where the uh, electrolyte used to be. We've got half a teaspoon per quart of electro electrolyte in there. And then the recirculating electrolyte comes out the bottom through an automotive 3 8 filter, comes through the split tube to the bottom. Is uh, Schedule 80 threaded coupler, or a T here, it's threaded on all three sides, um, and nylon uh, barbs with half inch thread. I couldn't get this any smaller than half inch, so everything on at least right there is half inch. It goes down to a quick release, 3 8 um, so I can drain it. That in the truck, that will be about two feet long and come out, out of the bottom of the truck. Got a thermocouple. Uh, actually, I have another thermocouple coming from eBay. It's going to be smaller, so I'll have to redrill on this side and plug that one. Uh, this is quarter inch. The new one will be six millimeter. Yeah, six millimeter. Okay, so the generator itself. You can see the um, the white ones are positive, the black ones are negative. I numbered them with dots so I could keep track of the wires one through four four neutral plates and then the gasket material I have a double gasket of fish pond liner and PVC. Um, the fish pond liner is very tough stuff, very durable. I thought that would be the ideal gasket material. It turns out it's electrically conductive. I'll show you here if I can do it with one hand. Here's my old Radio Shack meter. And you can see I'm going to touch those, and the meter is showing resistance. I was completely shocked when that happened. I put the thing, I spent a long time cutting the gaskets, put it together, and then it seemed like all the, get the plates were shorted. And this is what I use for plates. This is a rejected one. I could have made it work, but it, it was extra, really. So it's um, stainless steel kick plates. They were 8 inches wide and 30-something inches long. And I had one that was about three feet square. So I cut them all up, drilled the holes, which wore out a lot of drill bits. Those holes are um, like seven sixteenths of an inch. Um, and then I just, with tin snips, I cut notches in the corner and left a quarter inch stub to put the electrical connectors on. The neutral plates, I just cut that all the way off. Okay, so. Now for the sandwich boards, this is some nylon that I had laying around, uh, 3 8 nylon. I decided that wasn't going to be strong enough, it would probably bow. So I had some also some scrap aluminum laying around, I cleaned that up and cut aluminum plates to give it some strength. Uh, I left this recess here because originally I was going to put more aluminum plates in there to make it look pretty, but I haven't done that. So the uh, uh, these aluminum plates are electrically isolated from the rest. You've got your vinyl hose sleeves on the, the bolts. Um, 
and the truck is going to have a tray similar to this one to catch leaks. Uh, since I put the fish pond liner gaskets in, it has not leaked even though the bolts loosened up. This has gone through four heat cycles now. After the third, I tightened it down each time. After the third heat cycle, I put um, blue Loctite on the nuts rather than use uh, lock washers. I had lock washers on there at first, but it was making little aluminum shreds, and I decided I didn't like that. Now, the next one I make, I'm going to take those star washers and put them on the head side of the bolt. Uh, this I had to put in backwards because I couldn't get it to go the other way. But anyway, if I put star washers on the head side of the bolt, that'll keep the bolt stationary, and I can just tighten the nut. Um, I did that on another cell. It worked pretty well. All right, so... I'll, I'll try to take a couple seconds here to show you a couple failed. Well, not exactly failed. They work. This is uh, switch plate covers. These more marked 302 stainless steel. It's spaced out with uh, zip ties that are about 32 thousandths of an inch. I had a whole bunch of trouble keeping these things from touching each other. Uh, I had to take this apart 20 times or so and put it back together and I'd grind little pieces off. I ground all these corners off here to make it so that the uh, wherever there was a wire they wouldn't touch. Uh, I've used four or five different configurations. Uh, don't use switch plate covers unless you absolutely have to. It's just a big pain. Now for the wires, these are this is stainless steel MIG wire. I took three uh, 030, 30 thousandths inch MIG wire and twisted them. This is barely enough. These got sort of hot still. This, I can't remember how many amps this was drawing. It wasn't very efficient, about 2.4 uh, MMW or something like that. And it made a lot of heat. So I gave up on that and I went to the dry cell. <clears throat> now I had a little bit of scrap left over from the dry cell. These right here, they don't match up very well. I'm probably getting a lot of voltage leakage here across the plates because they're just scraps. I didn't even recut them. I just drilled new holes and put them together with. 32,000 spacing. Now the wires here are um, 40 thousandths um, 302 stainless tie wire. I got it at uh, Harbor Freight. And I took the loop end, I, I took on this in particular I used two strands, wrapped it, doubled it up, put it on a bolt, clamped the bolt in the vise, chucked up this end in a drill and just spun it until it made a nice rope. Then I MIG welded them to the plates. I don't like to drill. Drilling this stuff is a pain. It tears up drill bits. If you can weld, uh, it's much better. Now, I don't not set up for stainless steel, but it worked anyway. Worked good enough to hold it together. All right, that's all for now. Once again, good luck.